Uh, we have a uh, platform session. Uh, first speaker will be Zoe Romano. Zoe will talk about OpenWare program and its origins in Sertica Nado. And uh, I read in the bottom things that you're actually someone who pays her bills. But then, as a copywriter and concept designer, I should be talking about project experience right now. Please come up. Hi. Thanks for uh, creating this event. We have this chance to talk about open design. Today I'm going to talk about uh, Openware. That is uh, the project that I co-founded in 2009. And, uh, but uh, this project uh, has a previous history that started uh, some years before. As my background is not in fashion and it's not in design, I studied philosophy and media technology and for 10 years uh, I've been involved in uh, activism in Italy regarding precarious work and tent workers. And in 2005, a bunch of activists that I was part of decided that it was time to talk about uh, the, the situation of exploitation of workers inside the fashion system and especially during the fashion week. So we thought which were the best way, which was the best way to talk about these topics and we thought that the best way was to create a fake fashion designer to be inserted in official calendar of the fashion week. And we did this uh, we, because we were all coming from a, a background of media and so Milan is the like, capital of uh, immaterial labor regarding fashion. Uh, talking about precarity doesn't, doesn't mean only talking about the manufacturing part of fashion, but especially in Milan, there are a lot of uh, immaterial workers working on branding, uh, communication, and all of this. So we have the capacity to create a brand that is the logo of Serpi Canaro. Actually, the name uh, Serpi Canaro is the anagram of uh, San Precario. San Precario was uh, a saint that we invented the year before to like as a protector of all the precarious workers of the uh, Italian uh, uh, system. Uh, and uh, we created like fake uh, journal uh, mag magazine, no actually the magazine were real, but the, the fake uh, the, the journalist and the articles. And uh, we created also a book in which uh, uh, we presented to the Chamber of Fashion some kind of uh, collection, but actually it was uh, stock uh, photos, uh, just uh, reworked uh, a little bit. And we, we also had a, a nice website with flash and all the flashy things that uh, usually you find in, in, in fashion websites. And uh, we presented this brand identity and everything, and uh, we didn't expect it to be accepted, but after three days, we received a fax saying that this fashion designer, that it was not Italian, but half Japanese and half English, so we could like somehow be less traceable. Uh, they said that we were accepted, and we say, oh my God, now we have to prepare something. So we, we involved uh, other friends and other activists to produce a fashion show in which we presented 10 allegoric uh, uh, dresses talking about uh, the way we were working. So talking about exploitation, talking about bullying and mobbing in the job place, or for example, uh, the, the garment to hide the pregnancy because when you have a tent contract, if they know that you're pregnant, then they let you home. And so the, the action was really successful. And after that, uh, there was a lot of talking into the media. And we, we, we what the first thing that we realized that we didn't print enough uh, t-shirts because when we, we had like 50 t-shirts and everyone wanted it. And, and so we say, oh my God, this is something we, 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 we need to keep going and reflecting on this topic. And uh, so we kept reflecting on the work in the creative industry, what does it mean? What we realized that 
there is an overproduction of creative workers in the sense that when you come out of design university, no one is waiting for you there. So uh, what do we do? The, the, right now, the system of fashion is not capable to absorb all the students that come out of university. So we need to think about how to create another system with other values. On the other side, we realized that we wanted to be active in understanding how the craft of making clothes is important. For example, my grandmother used to understand when she was going in the shop uh, if a shirt was well done or not well done. And now they give you, they make you pay a lot of money for garments that are not the quality, they don't have quality in it. And just for the brand, they cost a lot of money. And on the other side, we started reflecting on intellectual property. How come that the fashion industry is uh, the garment, the actually the object of all consumerism are not the ones that are protected from copyright or the other protection? Actually, is the brand that is protected. So you can freely copy uh, a jacket from a famous fashion designer. Uh, and unless you put the brand of this designer uh, on the jacket, you can do it uh, with no problem. So, the thing is that we realized that we had a trademark, because for the Chamber of Fashion, we needed to uh, actually give them a number of registration. And we realized that after the revelation that Terpica was not a real brand, the brand that usually are created in uh, uh, advertising agency, where the main uh, um, uh, main aim is to ventilate the needs of consumerism, uh, so the, it was not a fake brand. Our brand it became a tool to communicate the new values in society. So it, 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 it became a tool to promote our own value because it, it became famous and it, it was not to exploit workers or to exploit the, the consumerism, but actually to create another way of thinking about fashion. And so we started to study what was fashion about and we realized that there was a polarization going on. On one side you had big brands investing a lot in communication and investing in uh, big shops and nice shops and, and luxury. And on the other side, you have uh, fast fashion that uh, just uh, is focused on logistics and optimization of processes. And uh, in nine weeks, they can copy what's done by big brands and put it in shops. And uh, usually, the, the, the brand uh, only control this part of their business, that is the material part, and the outsource all is connected with creating, producing, and selling. Creating in the sense a lot of collections are produced, the prototype outside of the company. They just hire freelance designers and prototype people. And so in a way, the, the brand is extracting value from the pyramid and also exploit the workers that are below and work in, the, in this part of the scheme. So on the other side, we realized there was a new trend going on. Uh, again, there was a rise of the do-it-yourself scene, but in a, in a different way because it was Let's say that the brand, it was the do-it-yourself coming from the tag scene of the 80s and the 70s and 80s. But what, what happened is that the, the rise of Web 2.0 permitted these people, even if they were atomized around the, the globe, to uh, gather around communities uh, to, for example, social network to exchange knowledges or around uh, um, communities where you publish tutorials uh, and uh, or around the e-commerce platform where even if you live in a place uh, in the countryside, you can sell your own products uh, directly to someone else in the other part of the world. And uh, what we thought is that how can we mix these two um, type of uh, trends that we that we like and we, we think they, they are successful. In a way, we think that what uh, actually brand can do is work a lot 
on communication and being uh, recognized around the globe. And usually the small producers in, uh, that are atomized are not really visible. So only a small part of producers can really uh, sustain themselves in selling their own products uh, in, uh, in the social platform. But on the other side, we believe that uh, we could uh, use uh, the tool of branding as a way of, to foster a new way of, of um, production focused on small producer and uh, short supply chain and uh, the also uh, as a way to communicate these values in the outside world to a new type of consumers it could be a way to um, empower the people inside of the community so the tool of branding is useful to create a culture inside the network but also to communicate this thing outside and uh, we call this a meta brand because it's not really uh, a brand in itself, but it's something that stays above. But uh, who is part of this network? Uh, because uh, with Zepic and Aru, we, we started to create like a, a kind of community, the people that were agreeing with our values, that were sharing and uh, overcoming precarity to have a kind of flex security and things like that. Um, is this? How can you, some people would ask me, how can you control the people of the network? Do you certify the people that are part of the network? Actually, we don't certify in the sense that uh, you have uh, some kind of uh, collective brand that certify the people that are part of the network. But for example, when you have a certification, you have a fair trade that was born uh, 40 years ago, and then after some years, uh, some big brand, multinational, created this Rainforest Alliance uh, logo that somehow is less strict than the fair trade, and so they are doing like some kind of certification that people think it's something very similar to fair trade, but it's not. So McDonald's and other brands are part of the Rainforest Alliance. Also, Papigiano Reggiano is a is a collective brand in the sense that if you um, make the cheese in a certain part of Italy, following a, a certain process, then you can have uh, the, the brand of Parmigiano Reggiano. Uh, and also the Prosecco, the famous uh, wine of Italy. So, uh, in a way, the, the meta brand we thought of being a bottom-up uh, brand solution in the sense that uh, um, we use the uh, social network and the community to evaluate uh, and uh, have a peer-reviewed brand. But uh, we thought that with Selfie Canaro, as we were doing it as an activist thing, we couldn't manage. We had to invest more time in, in this. So that's why uh, in 2009, uh, I decided to find another, uh, um, other partners and uh, do an uh, EU application and create a new brand uh, with all the knowledge that we um, uh, pile up in um, our previous experiences. And so we, um, we won a grant for, from EU and we started uh, this uh, um, project trying to experiment on some key points. On one, on one way, we wanted to experiment of, on a new type of worker. So uh, not focus too much on the design side, but trying to find a new figure that we call the network artisan. So a person that is able to create ideas, but also manufacture it, is uh, in the middle ground between total immateriality and uh, manufacturing. On the other side, we wanted to experiment on branding open source in the sense that as the fashion accumulates value in the brand and creates value through the brand, how what happens if we free and we license and we try to redistribute the value that is produced by a brand? Then manufacturing, um, we were wanted to experiment manufacturing as a, a, a a distributed process in the sense that uh, you don't uh, focus on a factory but you think of sharing the codes and then let the people produce the stuff locally 
and then think about the, the copy as a legitimate resource. Everyone in fashion is copying, but no one is saying it. Everyone thinks it's original, but we think, uh, we know that everyone is copying. So why don't we keep this transparent? Why don't let people say, look, you can take this stuff, copy it and produce it and, and sell it. And then thinking about the uh, openware as a, a community uh, with a new social space online and think about openware as an experiment on enterprise as we wanted to do a social enterprise in the sense that the, the, the money that we earn, we want them to reinvest in them in the, pro in the project and to make the community grow stronger. So the new role, we saw the new role of the freelance uh, as uh, connected with the, the global communities but also as a person that is totally connected with and share uh, to share environment. So uh, totally connected with the local scene and to share project and infrastructure. And we wanted to create an environment uh, in which this thing could happen. So uh, we, we thought as Openware as a, uh, a, a kind of a transmission uh, belt in which uh, get put in touch the the students, the artisans, the con the consumers with uh, knowledge, education institutions, suppliers, and local hubs, local hubs to share infrastructures, and also suppliers in the sense that when you are a small designer and you want to produce uh, a small collection or some kind of garments and sell it yourself, if you go and buy. Uh, textile and you just want a small amount of textile, your, the prices are going to be rich. Uh, what happens if Openware goes to a supplier and says, I have 1,000 uh, small producers that could buy this amount of textile, what is the price that you want to do? So the, the cons um, buying supplies is not only a matter, uh, if you go alone, it's different than if you do it with other people. So we have three type of tools in the community. We offer a space where people can uh, open uh, their own space and show their own uh, production and uh, also connect with the local scene. Then we have a series of collaborative collections with an open source brand. That means uh, every year we want to create one collection in a collaborative way, so we invite uh, Tend the designers, crafters, the tailors to participate to a week of creation with a brief, and we want to. Uh, and the result of this moment of co-creation is then uh, published as code. So the code of the collection are, are published, and the, the the members of the community can download this code, produce the garment, sell the garment, and put the logo of the openware community next to their, their logo, if they have one. Uh, so, as I said, you can download the, the code with instructions to do things. You can also fork, uh, like you do with software, that you can make changes. And if you make changes from the pattern, you have to uh, share the changes that you did with the community. And then you can add the label to your logo. There is a video if you want to go uh, that explains the thing. So in a way, the pattern and the codes become a shared common of the community. And uh, we have a license that rules the way uh, you can use the logo. So as I said, the members can download, produce, customize, and label it with openware, but if they assure that they're going to share some changes, they're going to produce this, this garment, mainly handmade, but not totally, if some, uh, and, uh, and publish uh, the, the results, so take pictures of the garment that they produce and uh, put it on the, on the platform. Um, we want to open up a, a shop, an online shop, but we don't have it yet. We didn't have enough funding to have a shop. But the idea is that the, all the garments that are sold online, we receive a fee. But if you sell it locally to your neighborhood, we don't, we don't care. I mean, you just do it for free. 
So it, it's just, if you use the services uh, of the community, you pay a fee, uh, and uh, not now, but in the future, the idea is that. But the more you give to the community writing blogs, uh, blog posts or, or uploading uh, garments and codes, the less you pay for all the services that you try to give uh, to the community. And uh, so we set up a, a peer review uh, uh, system in which uh, when you open up your profile, you, cho you choose, uh, you have like an ethical profile, uh, you choose uh, when you open up your profile, you can choose some values that you stay for. These values, we suggest some. So we put some care, environmentalism, fairness, openness, solidarity, transparency, innovation. These, we think, are the core value of the community. But you can add your, if you want. And then you select a value and you explain in a sentence in which way you want to embody this value. And uh, then the people can rate you according to the relationship they have with you. And so in a way, you have an ethical profile inside the community, some kind of evolution of what happens uh, with eBay. And uh, the idea is to, we don't have still this part. I mean, we have the part of collaborators. You can network with your collaborators inside the communities. And uh, in the next uh, part of our project, we want to create uh, like a label to add to the garment in which you have uh, some, uh, um, let's say, physical uh, quality of the garment, but also the ethical quality and the ethical uh, values that are um, contained in the garment. So, are we producing uh, garments that are all the same because we come from the same cause? Actually, this doesn't happen because, for example, this is the first collection that is called Forward to Basic, and this is the easiest uh, code that we produced. And this is the example on how to do it. And uh, the other uh, week we did a workshop uh, some, uh, some weeks ago where people could do this. We experimented to do this with a laser cut. And uh, many people from different backgrounds came to the workshop. And from uh, the same code, uh, different oops, different uh, slippers came out totally and we using the laser cut we also could come up with uh, some uh, uh, slippers that were really cheap or these are were really expensive because the laser cut took, took so much time in designing all this uh, uh, design so and then this girl was one who participated. She was the only fashion designer in the group, and she did something totally like complicated. So the, the idea is that even if you copy from an idea, the result and the outcome is totally different. And the idea is to think about um, optimization of processes, understanding how, what, what is the best way to be a small producer, and uh, occupy that middle uh, space that there is between the polarization that I showed you before, between big brands and fast fashion. We believe there is a gap in the middle where quality is higher, but is not the super quality of the artisanship that in Italy is so, like, uh, is like almost like they are like artists, but no one can afford them. So we believe there is a middle uh, part that we can, uh, where a lot of workers, uh, a lot of uh, creatives can uh, occupy and, uh, and create value for themselves and their, uh, like, uh, uh, pay their bills. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, what the main thing is that we believe that making it together is better than making it yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Difficulty was to deal with the fashion schools 
and people coming from real fashion background because uh, they, uh, there is a lot of focus on the, the uh, figure of the designer that is the creator. So when we were talking about, oh, let's do this together or we can share and we can download and we can copy and uh, the problem was, oh, yes, but where is the genius? Where, how do you make people believe they are super cool and, and find their fans? So I don't know. Here we want to focus more also on the manufacturing, bring the creativeness in the manufacturing part because we believe that it has given too much attention to the immaterial part, but little attention to what is really a skill that are important in creating a nice uh, garment. That also means that the idea of what fashion is yes. will radically change on the yes. fashion thing. Yeah. Any other question? No one. Yeah. We'll bring them back at the end. So prepare your questions.